Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nifon Tui and on this channel I make certain tutorials. I post new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays, so please make sure to check back on those days in order to watch new content. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make the puncher that you just saw in the bureau sequence and on the thumbnail. If you like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to share it with a friend or a person who might be interested in stuff like this. And if you are not subscribed, please do. I greatly appreciate um, every subscriber that has subscribed so far. If you are a beginner or if you are a person that wants to brush up on your skill, I offer online courses. I will be showing a demo on how to make a jumpsuit for you to watch and decide if learning online will be convenient for you. If you are interested, send a telegram message to the number that you can see on the screen. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your time. Have a lovely day. Bye bye. Alright, you're welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the poncho that you've seen in the thumbnail. So now, first to begin, um, you when we're cutting the poncho, we're going to cut the back before cutting the front, unlike what we usually do, that we cut the front, then cut the back. So basically, we're basically going to be cutting in reverse, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to need a pattern paper, of course, to draft. And then you've seen the measurements that I have already. The first measurements we're going to apply is the neckline width and the neckline depth. When you are make, if you if you fall between um, the both sides of the both sides of 32 all the way up to 40, you are going to use the neckline width of 2.5. From 40 up, you are going to um, open it up to three inches. So for me, what I'm going to do is from here to here, I'm going to come to 2.5 because the bust. The person, the uh, person I'm making this for has a bust of um, of um, 36. Okay. Now what we're going to do after we've done this is I need you to make a one inch slope. So for you see from this 2.5, the edge of the paper come down by one inch, not half inch, one inch. Okay. We're drafting the back first. Oops. Now we're going to connect here together and connect it out, and then we're going to make a curve. okay okay now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mark the um the poncho length okay so for the length you've seen is the the length you saw in the measurement before the video started was um 24 inches so i'm going to add one inch there for um hemming okay so you see this look at where i'm coming from to mark my 24. i'm not coming from the top of the paper i'm coming from the neckline okay you see that from the neckline and i'm going to make a mark at 25 okay 25 make a little move make a mark at 25 i'm basically going to do this around the neckline 25 everywhere we've connected we've made a mark uh 25 from the neckline from the neckline here we've made a mark 25 now remember to always measure from around the neckline not from the points okay now the next thing we're going to do you are basically going to connect all your lines together so i'm going to connect here to here now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut it out okay. and then for the neckline we're going to just come from here and cut it out you see that now the next thing is i'm going to put my fabric on a fold and then i'm going to place this pattern on top and cut it after you have made your fold make sure to keep you see this um our neckline here make sure to keep your neckline facing the area that is sealed so you see when i made my fold okay my pattern this is the part that is sealed so i'm going to make that neckline okay to sit at the edge of the pattern where it is sealed now what i'm going to simply do is i'm going to simply just cut around the edges basically just replaced the rearranged the pattern because i wanted to be able to cut the neckline uh, so that you guys would see me clearly if i had maneuvered i might have blocked the camera so that's why i had to rearrange the pattern okay so basically just make sure that they are the same length at the bottom here so that you don't end up cutting it short if you happen to turn and twist yours like i'm twisting mine and cut the neckline and the shoulder that 24 in case i didn't explain where this um 
where the 24 came from because you know we had 24 then we added one inch to it the 24 inches is the top length okay so when you take like a regular top length you come from the shoulder and go all the way down so that's how i took that 24 from the shoulder to where the person is comfortable with it was 24 inches that's why i got that 24 number from now the next thing is to cut the um, panel so now there are two sides okay there's a long side and there's a short side okay so let me get my um phone okay so you can see the image on the screen this is what we're trying to replicate so you can see the area that is flat this um the the this side here okay where this area here that is on the screen now that you can see that has the strap that this other one comes into okay this area is going to be cut a bit shorter than the than the other one that comes in because the other one has more travel to do so we're going to cut that a bit longer but as for the width okay from the shoulder okay down to the end of the sleeve okay from the shoulder i hope you can see that dot on the screen from the shoulder down to this point here is going to have to be 24 inches okay i really do hope that the tap i'm tapping is showing from here to from here to here is going to be 24 inches then the length from here okay from here to here okay is going to be 33 inches okay so from here to here is 33 inches from up here to here now as for the long one we're going to still cut here to here the width at 24 we're going to cut the length from here to here at 40 at 41 inches okay so let's um i'm going to cut both of them long and then i'm going to just um, reduce the other one so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut two rectangles that have a width of 25 not 24 anymore because remember we added one inch here a width of 25 inches by 41 i'm going to cut two then i'm going to reduce the one that is meant to be short so from here to here from here to here is where i have my 25 inches from the edge here to here is where i have my 25 inches okay from here to here is the 25 inches and for the length so i'm going to first cut from here all the way up before everything starts to move and then i'm going to measure my 41 uh, my 41 inches from here okay so because because i put it on a fold because i put it on the fold i basically cut two parts okay because i put it on the fold now that i've slashed this place i just slashed now i have cut it into two so one of them is the long length that we need of 41 inches and the other one need one of it needs to be reduced to the 33 inches okay okay so now when you want to start stitching you want to make sure that you stitch the short side first okay so we're stitching the part that we cut to 33 first so the short side is where we're stitching first and um make sure that when you're stitching it you stitch it to the right of your um of whatever you're making so at the end of the day this is how it's going to look this part here that you can see is the right side of the fabric and when the person puts it on this side here is the right you can see where my right hand is so on the right side you want to keep your pattern on the short pattern the one that is 33 you want to keep it on the right side okay so front facing front and you are stitching it onto the right side okay so what we're going to do is this so you see the area so you know one side is 33 the other side is going to be shorter and it's going to be 25 inches long you are going to join the side that is 25 inches long to this part here beside the neck okay so i'm going to now run from here all the way i'm going to run from here all the way down at half an inch okay if you have access to an overlocker for the neatest result possible what you're going to do is immediately after you make this stitch take it to your overlocker or your weaving machine and finish the edge immediately after you jumble to them together so okay um that edge sorry now the next thing we're going to do is i'm going to join the long side okay i'm going to join the long side to the opposite um shoulder okay 
So you see this, I'm going to join the long side to the opposite shoulder. I'm still going to use half an inch. You see that I have finished I have finished this other part here as well okay so now the next thing I want you to do is I want you to head over to your um, to your cutting table and I need you to cut the yellow fabric at 5 inches by 6 inches and come back okay so cut it by 5 inches by 6 inches and come back the yellow fabric okay so you can see this this is what we have we have five inches from here to here by six inches. So the width, five inches, the length, six inches. What I want you to do is fold it like so, okay? And then stitch half an inch from the top all the way down. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to lay it flat like this and iron it. So you see this, I need you to lay it flat like this and press and iron it. That's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so you see this? This is how this looks. The next thing we want to do is you want to turn everything here inside out. Still take it and give it a good press. So at the end of the day, you want where you joined to face up here. You don't want it to be on the side. Okay, because by the time we fix it, we'll fix it like this and we don't want our joining showing on the left or on the right. So we want it to be facing the fabric so that it just looks smooth and clean. Okay, so now the next step, when you're done with ironing this, look at the end result, look how flat and smooth it is. The next part we're going to handle is the uh, biasing. Okay, so you see this here. This is the neck. Now, I don't want to use, I, if all the parts were straight, like for instance, if all the edges here were straight, okay, I'd have simply just hemmed it for the folding half two times, okay? And I simply just hemmed the straight line the way we usually hem by folding half half. But that would be good and fine on the long side. But when you get around a curve, it's more difficult to do that. It's possible, but it's more difficult. So for hemming around curves, and also the curve around this back too. So you see, this curve that we did when we're marking 25, 25, 25, all the way around, that curve also needs bias to make sure that it turns perfectly. You don't want some places um, squeezing and doing all of that. So um, for the center and for the outer part of the circle, we are going to use um, cotton bias to finish the edges. We are going to start from the long part and we are going to come across the neck all the way to the opposite side. Okay, so now to look at how it looks, it comes in a row like this. I've shown this before on the channel, but if you are new here, you see this. Look at it, it comes pre-folded, okay? It comes folded like so. So what you're going to do is you're going to open it and lay it flat on top of, you see this is the front side of the fabric. You want to turn the bias to the inside so that it doesn't show since the color is not exactly the same. But, um, so what we're going to do is, you see you open one of the places that were, pre, that was pre-folded for you and then we're going to simply just stitch on the crease. When you open it up, you'll see a line inside there. That is where you want your needle to fall from here all the way around to the other side so let's go when you get to the end when you get to the end you can cut off the excess cut off the excess um, cut off the bias where it stops and then what we'll simply do look at the inside here we're going to now turn the bias from the front inside and what it will do is it will cover all our rough work with this smooth um, finish okay you see this so I'm going to now bring this in simply just stitch it so what to show on the other side is just one line of thread going around and on the inside it will be clean So yeah, that's how you use the bias to finish it. Now if we turn to the inside, you will see that to the outside, sorry, you see how clean here is. You see even the neckline everywhere is just clean and smooth from here all the way down. I'm going to do the same thing to the outer part, but I don't think I'm going to film that because basically the same thing I just did now. I'm going to place my bias, this is the front side, 
okay you can see the clean finish here and the bias is not showing here so i'll basically do the same thing fix the bias from here all the way down and then i'm going to now turn it towards the inside so by the time you see this next i would have finished the circular parts properly okay so you see this is the inner part here you can see the neckline next time you see me i would have finished the edge you see this round edge here i would have finished it perfectly and then we'll move on to the next step okay so with that i have finished both sides of my neckline okay now the next thing is you're going to come to the bottom of the front so if you notice when we were stitching we started from here and went up and we also started uh, we started from here and went up but you see this other side here that has this hem is just straight okay now we're going to need to hem it so you're going to bend forward half an inch twice okay and simply just um, stitch from here all the way down i'm doing this on the long piece now i'm also going to repeat the same thing on the uh, shorter side that's going to be about Now that I've hemmed both sides, the next step is to install this flap on the short side, okay? So you're going to come to the part here that is shorter. Okay, so now when it's time for you to place the, um, to stitch the strap onto the short side, what you're going to do is this, okay? You are going to measure, the, you need to know the person's underboss length if you're making this custom. Okay, but if you have an underboss length, if you're making for someone with an underboss length of 14, you would add two inches to it and come to 16 to place. If you don't know anything about measurements, watch my video on how to take measurements. That would help you understand what's going on. So now what you are going to do is this. You are going to place the under the person's underboss length plus two inches. So you see, this side here is the short side. So you are going to place the person's underboss length plus two inches. Okay, so the underboss length I'm working with is an underboss length of 14 plus 2 inches, 16. So you see this line here, this is the shoulder line. This here is the neck, okay? You can see the curve around there, okay? You can see the curve that makes the neck. So you're going to come from the shoulder line, okay? So first you drop down to 16 inches, and when you have located 16 inches, you are going to measure 9 inches away from the edge. So you see this edge here, okay, the straight line. Okay, you are going to come nine inches away from the straight line and place it there. Okay, so, excuse me. When you get the points where it's supposed to be, you are going to get this part here, okay? So you see this part? You are going to fold half an inch down, okay? You see that? It's flat, you fold half an inch down, and then you are going to come to the spot, okay? And then stitch over it. after that you have done that's how i made the top okay so now what's left for you to do is just to dress up and then throw this one on top so what you're going to now do is you're going to come to the end here you're going to just fold all of this okay and pass it through here simple and after that you're pretty much ready to go okay so that's how that was made Okay, so I'm going to see you in the next video. You've seen the bureau. You've seen this on my um, on my model already. That is how I went about the entire sewing process. Okay, so if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe because I drop content like this every Wednesdays and Saturdays. Have a lovely day. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.